Hey guys, it's Kalki here. I just want to talk to you about something really important that is really cool and interesting, which is actually just an amazing and miraculous thing in real life, which is a real example of miracles and supernatural that scientists have proven. In my last video, I talked about water and how scientists have proven the amazing and supernatural and spiritual properties of water. And in this video, I'll be talking about random generators and how scientists have already proven the incredible features of random generators as well. And so this basically relates to chaos. So just like how water is spiritual and is directly affected by people, also chaos is as well and chance and destiny. So what is a random generator? Is basically, you can use most commonly found on the internet or um, other types of machines that they use a certain algorithm and sequence to, to achieve random results. And like, for example, random number generators just generate random numbers. There's random name generators. On the internet, you can find any sort of thing random, like random elf names, random wizard names, random colors, if you just look that up. But scientists have actually proven that these random generators are actually not random at all. And they actually have all these amazing coincidences and correspond with stimuli and this basically relates to the oracle of nature. And so these random generators are actually completely preordained and give preordained results. And so they have actually they have actually proven that these results coming from the random generators are not random. Like for example, whenever there's a deadly mass terrorist attack, like during 9/11 or some tragedy or some event that gets on the news, and a lot of people are thinking about the same thing at once, they say that that really affects the random generators, and um, and we'll get into that, how that works um, in a bit. But basically, I have actually done this myself too, and the random generators have given me amazing results. And of course, I've been using the Oracle in other ways to get used randomly, um, to use the Oracle, like the I Ching uses coin tosses, which are um, considered random, to achieve a hexagram that can predict the future and give a fortune telling. And so this is basically fortune telling as well. And so the random generators are not really random at all. And so they all like basically if you ask a question to the random generator, the thing the results will be the answer to that question. Or if you give it any sort of stimuli to the random generator with your mind or actions or anything, the random generators will produce the results corresponding with that stimuli. And so the reason this works is because of the actually these spiritual fields. Like, for example, um, scientists have proven that space itself is not even empty, um, like in a vacuum. There is no such thing as emptiness, even at zero degrees Kelvin, which is no temperature. There's still fluctuations of quantum uh, fluctuations and virtual particles or energy, no matter what. So there really is no emptiness. So space itself is basically personified and is anthropomorphized space. And uh, space is spiritual and contains, of course, there's heaven and the spiritual realm. And that directly affects it too, as well as spirits. So random generators can also be used to contact the dead and contact ghosts or gods or angels or angels. You can contact them through the random generators. And that's a, a really good idea for a um, some sort of communication device to ghosts or to detect ghosts with these random generators as well. And they've, scientists have proven that this random generator is really respond to meditation and that kind of thing a lot too. So when they had groups of people meditating in a circle or whatever, they could easily affect these random generators and get them to get whatever kind of results. And you, you, again, you can look it up for yourself online. Just type in random generator. It could be numbers, names, colors, anything. They have all sorts of random generators on there. And I myself have used these random generators and gotten amazing results. Like I, there's so many of them, I actually recorded a lot of them. 
And um, it was it's always successful. And I got amazing results with these random generators. Like they would random these random generators. It's just like the Oracle because it's the all knowing Holy Spirit of God and the universe, which is controlling it. And so the random generator is really all knowing, and it knows everything. So yeah, that's why it gets these results like that. It's just like the Oracle in that way. Okay, so my idea for a random generator is to use cosmic background radiation in the um, programming and in the system to use that for a source of randomness from the universe. And it can also be used from other natural sources. But cosmic background radiation is what causes static on old-fashioned TVs and that can um, definitely be used for the random generators. And that would provide really good results, I think. About 50 years worth of study. Then in the, in the 1990s, Roger Nelson at, at Princeton got the idea that maybe intention was only a piece of the puzzle and maybe attention was also important. That the act of attending, which we think of internally, at, attending is a kind of coherent mental state. You're focusing in on one thing. And if that, if we can think of that as not simply being in your head, but being out there as well, then when you attend to something, it changes. And it changes in a direction of coherence. So if the target of your attention is randomness, then a cohered random system is, by definition, more orderly, becomes ordered. And so you can detect that order through statistics easily. So he started doing experiments where he'd take a random number generator, an electronic circuit, and put it in the vicinity of a group that was meditating, thinking that this would create a large amount of coherent attention. Sometimes people knew the random generator was there, and sometimes they didn't know. And he wanted to see whether the randomness would become orderly during the meditation. And after hundreds of such tests by Roger and me and a bunch of our colleagues, we came to the conclusion that it does become less random in a context where we can infer that there's mental coherence going on sometimes do only to attention. So in, I think it was 1994 I did an experiment before, during, and after the announcement of the O.J. Simpson verdict in his murder trial. And this was a unique period in history in that it was the first time that I'm aware of, in modern time anyway, first time where there's actually one other I can think of, which was landing on the moon. But a first instance where hundreds of millions of people around the world knew that something interesting was going to happen at a, at a stroke of a f couple of seconds in the future. It was a reading of a verdict which would either say guilty or not guilty. And so imagine the amount of attention that's slowly focusing up to that moment. I figured this would make a great experiment because I could have a whole bunch of random number generators going and we can look in time sequence what is happening to the randomness as we approach the moment of announcement of the verdict? Where we have maybe a billion people paying attention to it. So I did that. I had five random number generators going, uh, four in the U.S. and one in Europe, and tracked what was happening to the randomness as we got closer and closer to the verdict and the verdict being read and afterwards. And we found very clear evidence that there was a, a sudden peak in order in the, the random generators within seconds of the verdict being read. Can you actually measure the emotional outpouring in a worldwide crisis? Sometimes scientists think that they have done just that. Their machines and computers found a bizarre pattern right after several global disasters. CBS 2's Brendan Keefe explains this phenomenon. September 11th deeply affected people far beyond New York and Washington. The attack sent shockwaves around the world, a global reaction that triggered a spike in a network of scientific instruments, just like a seismograph during an earthquake. Each of those showed a similar pattern of change during that day. Retired Princeton scientist Dr. Roger Nelson believes the emotional focus of millions of people on a single event like 9-11 may form a global consciousness. Does consciousness interact directly with the physical world? To answer that question, Dr. Nelson and his colleagues deployed dozens of instruments around the world. Random number generators. Basically, they're electronic coin flippers. Instead of heads or tails, each generates a one or a zero 200 times a second. If you flip a coin 100 times, you'd expect a result of about 50-50. 50 heads, 
and 50 tails. But what if every time you flipped that coin, it came up heads? Not once, not twice, not 50 times, but 60, 70, or even 80, all of them heads. We do that every second at each of, um, now we have about 65 places around the world. When truly random, the line of data wanders back and forth around 50-50 in a pattern the researchers call a drunkard's walk. And then in 9-11, it begins not being a drunkard's walk. It goes like this for two days. It may sound bizarre, but Dr. Nelson and his team have been at this for the better part of a decade. The first spike showed up in 1997 with the death of Princess Diana. Other events like the Concord crash. And like I said, space itself is spiritual, and a person has these spiritual fields, including their brain waves and aura and karma fields, which I'm going to go into in the next video. But a person has their own spiritual field as well. And so when many people are thinking about the same event, like a national event happens, that, that makes a change in the spiritual fields because everyone's thinking about that thing. So the spiritual fields that are in space are shifted by their minds. And that's also what affects the random generators as well. And also this directly relates to destiny, of course, too. And so like all destiny and fate can be um, seen through the oracle and the random generators are the oracle. And also we talked about how water has these spiritual qualities um, in my last video. But also I think all the elements do like fire, air, and rock and all these different elements may also have these definitely do have these um spiritual quality like definitely do have these spiritual qualities uh and supernatural properties to the other elements as well and it also relates directly again to this um just these spiritual fields and reality that affect the elements and uh, okay so these random generators i, I can also be used to increase magic as well and so like I've done times where I just picked a random thing using the random number generator and then based off whatever that is I make a spell and it will almost that definitely works every time because when you incorporate the oracle like that into um, spells and whatever or anything it makes it a lot better I'm proposing to do today is to talk about global consciousness, an idea that um, it really is uh, now ready for us to take on. What it's referring to is an interconnection of minds, and in Tehar de Chardin's term, it's a noosphere, a layer of knowing or intelligence for the earth. Um, in Tehar's um, idea, in his uh, description of what it means to be human and what evolution amounts to it, he said that we have another stage to go that we are well advanced, but that we will become what we are supposed to become in the next phase, and that is a layer of intelligence to take care of the earth, of the earth, of the earth. That if you intend that the world, in the form of this device, that the world should change, it will change. It might be a small difference, but it's a real difference. And moving on to how this kind of machine works, or what a random number generator is, uh, many people think of a computer program, but that's not what we were using. Instead, we were using a physical device. It was deeply buried in that box on the table. And I'll show you pictures of uh, simpler, smaller ones that we use nowadays. They all are based, uh, the ones we used, on electron tunneling. It's a quantum effect. And this is a kind of graphic that might give you some idea. We set up a circuit that's uh, driving electrons against a barrier. That white bar in the middle is a middle is a middle is a bear. It does appear there as a tiny voltage that we sample. And when it's a high, uh, when that voltage is a fairly, fairly high level, we say that's a one. If it's a low uh, level, we say it's a zero. And we wind up with a completely unpredictable quantum-based sequence of random numbers, zero, one, one, zero, zero, zero. Humans can't produce random numbers very well, but these devices produce exactly, um, theoretically, uh, effective random numbers. The, and remember, the important definition is the, that the, a sequence of random numbers has, in effect, no future, no future that's been determined. The, the Global Consciousness Project is um, an, an evolutionary step out of 50 years of prior experiments. The experiments were looking at the relationship between mind and matter, and specifically intention 
and the, and the behavior of the, of the physical world. I mean, it all devolves back into the question, what is the role of mind in the physical world? From a Western science point of view, there isn't much. I mean, I, I as a, a designer of a car, can get an internal uh, image and an intention to build a car, and eventually a car appears. But that's not a direct link. It requires a lot of work between the intention and the building of a car. But this question is saying more that, is there a direct link between one's intention and the behavior of the world? With an unmediated link, or if mediated, we don't know by what yet. Well, those experiments typically would use very sensitive physical systems and then you would ask somebody to direct their intention at it and try to push the system around, make it do this versus that. So a prototype example is flip a coin and wish for heads. And now flip a coin, wish for tails. And you can do that experiment, and it has been done many times. And what you see after loads of data is that the statistics of the system that you're working with are biased in the direction that you, you want the intention to go. So Coins are an okay system to work with, but as mechanical things are very difficult to, to track um, precisely. So electronic circuits started to be used in the 1960s where it did the equivalent of coin flipping, only it was flipping bits, random bits. And it could produce bits very quickly and all of the bits could be recorded precisely. And so you could do an experiment where you have a random number generator going and you ask somebody to force it to, mentally force it to create more ones and zeros. And then now create more zeros and ones. And now let the thing run all by itself as a calibration condition. And what you find after very long period studies like this and meta-analyses looking at many studies by many different people, that there are biases that show up in the randomness. The systems that should be random are no longer behaving randomly. 